The court proceeding Al Gore hopes will reopen the recount process. From a Bush witness, a surprise admission about voting machine problems and close elections. You need either re-inspection or manual recount where you have that situation. Yes, you do. The Republican message to Gore today. It's time for him to concede. A victory for planet Earth. The hole in the ozone layer is shrinking. 50 to 70 years from now, we shouldn't have ozone depletion anymore. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News, reported by John Siegenthaler. Good evening, everyone. More witnesses and more accusations today in a Florida courtroom as lawyers for George W. Bush and Al Gore continued their battle over a recount of disputed votes. Inside the courtroom, unexpected testimony from a Bush witness on hand recounts, while on national television, Republican running mate Dick Cheney said Al Gore should concede. NBC's Kelly O'Donnell is at the courthouse in Tallahassee. Good evening, Kelly. Good evening, John. 13 witnesses, well over 100 exhibits in about 18 hours this weekend. Still not fast enough for Al Gore. His lawyers pleading with the judge again today to immediately start a hand recount. Again today, the judge said no, putting off a decision. Today, the rushed pace of this case made for some surprises. Day two, the Bush defense, an attack on the Democrats' evidence an accusation that Al Gore has personally spread misinformation. Yes, the vice president was wrong about that. Okay. Wrong, he says, that the punch card voting devices under attack in this election contest are more often used in less affluent, more democratic communities. The Bush team also charging fuzzy math. Not, and it makes for an unreliable and inaccurate projection because it is based on a false premise. The Stanford-educated statistician hammered the methods and conclusions of the Gore legal team's expert, disputing the idea that the high number of no votes in the contested counties means a problem with the voting machines, not the voters. Bush lawyers say there's no proof. Is there any valid basis that people were trying to vote for Al Gore, but they simply weren't able to push the stylus through the chair? Absolutely none. From math class to shop, as Bush called one of the patent holding engineers who helped design the Votomatic back in the 60s. Several thousand of them were sold to Miami Dade and Palm Beach counties. Witness John Amon shot down Gore claims that old, worn, and dirty equipment caused voting errors. I seriously doubt that the voter uh, would be unable to push the chad through on, on a normal voting device. What appeared to be a rough morning for Al Gore turned on a Perry Mason moment. During the testimony, a Gore aide, not seen on camera, delivered evidence. I only have one copy and I'm using it. I got it five minutes ago. All right. I'll tell you the truth. Somebody gave it to me and that's how things are going. The document? the witness's 1981 patent application for a new and improved model voting device. In it, this Bush witness revealed a series of flaws in the Votomatic, the kind used in this election, supporting several of Gore's arguments. Therefore, the material typically used for punch boards and punch and card voting can and does contribute to potentially unreadable votes. More than identifying the problem, the witness even provided a solution. The same one Gore is seeking. You need either re-inspection or manual recount. The burden of proof here is on Al Gore to convince Judge N. Sanders Sauls that a hand count is warranted and could change the election outcome. While Republicans are on the offensive in the court of public opinion, Bush running mate Dick Cheney urged the vice president to concede. History would regard him in uh, uh, better light uh, if he were to bring this to the close in the very near future. Back in Tallahassee, the judge working overtime tonight. The Gore team putting on a rebuttal case and final arguments still to come. John? NBC's Kelly O'Donnell. Kelly, thanks. Now to NBC's chief law correspondent, Dan Abrams, who was also in Tallahassee. And Dan, how important is all this detailed testimony we heard today about the voting machines and the analysis of voting patterns? Well, and John, don't forget about the Chad build-up testimony as well. Look, uh, these witnesses may not make the difference. It really may hinge on a sort of technical legal question. And that is, uh, how much uh, can the judge look at the evidence? How does he look at the evidence? Can he simply decide if there are legal uncounted votes out there, as the Gore team claims? 
or as the Bush team argues, does he only look to whether there was a mistake made by the county canvassing boards in Miami for not hand recounting the votes and in Palm Beach based on how they did it. John? Where are these differing standards coming from? Well, look, the Gore team is focusing more on the words of the statute, the Bush team relying more on case law. The relevant Florida provision says that you can contest elect an election on the following grounds, quote, rejection of a number of legal votes sufficient to change or place in doubt the result of the election. In essence, the Gore team is saying, look, if there are enough uncounted legal votes out there, this judge must order a recount. The Bush team is saying, look, it is not that simple. And they actually quote from a Florida Court of Appeals decision, which says that the Florida statute, quote, clearly leaves the decision whether or not to hold a manual recount within the discretion of the canvassing board. Now, which standard the judge adopts could determine the outcome of this case, John? NBC's Dan Abrams in Tallahassee. Dan, thank you. Now, action is expected this week in at least four other courts, including the U.S. Supreme Court, which could issue its ruling as early as tomorrow. NBC's John Palmer is at the court tonight. Good evening, John. Good evening, John. At least one of the justices was uh, seen here at the court today, and all the clerks were here working very busily on a case that could have a major impact on the outcome of the election. Justice delayed. A handful of demonstrators and a few curious tourists were the only indications that much of the nation's attention will be focused here this week. The key issue before the high court, did the Florida Supreme Court go too far when it extended the time for the hand counting of ballots beyond the deadline set by the Secretary of State? The case is submitted. Chief Justice Rehnquist at the close of arguments on Friday, officially taking the case and signaling the beginning of deliberations. The court has several options. It could rule that the Florida Supreme Court acted improperly when it extended the time for certifying the vote total. That would favor Gore. Rule that by extending the certification deadline, the court overstepped its authority. That would favor Bush. Another option refused to make any ruling on this case at this time. The attorneys for Gore and Bush, who argued the case before the Supreme Court, disagreed today on whether the justices might go for the third option and refuse to decide. I suspect there's a good chance that they will say, you know, we didn't really need to take this case. There's no real federal urgency. I'm rather encouraged that the Gore people would like the court not to decide the case. That gives me some comfort and encouragement. Uh, I think that they will decide the case. A constitutional lawyer not affiliated with either candidate said a decision to overturn the Florida Supreme Court would put Gore in an awkward position. If it decides for uh, Governor Bush, uh, well then I think that uh, uh, Al Gore is uh, going to be put under tremendous pressure to uh, concede. Well, because of the importance of this case, most court watchers expect the justices to strive for as unanimous a decision as they can get. Certainly anything but a five to four decision. John? NBC's John Palmer at the Supreme Court. John, thanks much. Almost four weeks after Election Day and still no president-elect, Governor Bush's official lead in Florida is 537 votes out of nearly 6 million cast, a margin of 0.009%. So small a margin that Vice President Gore feels duty-bound to keep fighting. But how long will his fellow Democrats back that play? NBC's Joe Johns reports. Vice President Gore, his wife, and a daughter attended church in Washington today. So far, congressional Democrats are supporting his fight, though one top senator embraced a cutoff date for the election controversy. The burden falls on George W. Bush and Al Gore equally, and the burden to concede the election for the national interest comes as early as a definitive court decision or as late as December 12th. By December 12th, each state must settle disputes over its slate of delegates to the Electoral College. Just six days later, the electors actually cast their votes. But the idea of setting a deadline to resolve the controversy in Florida is still being resisted by most Democratic congressional leaders. I'm not going to suggest that there's a proper time for either Bush or Gore to get out of the race. I think we need to let the process work its will. Republicans continue to hope moderate and conservative Democrats will help pressure Gore out of the race. Louisiana Senator John Bro's name has even been floated as a Bush cabinet member. He has spoken with both candidates but still might stay where he is. I think being in the Senate with a 50-50 tie vote is a uh, unique opportunity and offers some great challenges. 
That 50-50 split can only happen if Gore is defeated, sending Democratic vice presidential nominee Joe Lieberman back to the Senate. In effect, their party gains on Capitol Hill by losing the White House. And one congressional Democrat has said publicly that Gore should throw in the towel. I think we ought to go ahead and let it, let it happen and let Al Gore come back and he'll have a cakewalk in four years. He'll win the presidency hands down. The watch for defecting Democrats will continue as Congress resumes work this week. Joe Johns, NBC News, The Capitol.